Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Jackpot Comic Talks. I'm Sophie, and here we discuss anything and everything to do with comics. And in today's video, we're going to be starting to dive into my Mary Jane Watson collection. So let's get on into it. So like I said, we're going to be talking all about my Mary Jane comics, but before we begin, I wanted to give you a little bit of background on why I love the character so much. Now, I do remember my first introduction to her, it was in Ultimate Spider-Man comic. Um, I read it uh, when I was a kid, uh, quite a few years ago, and I remember absolutely loving this character of Mary Jane. Um, and. I need to find that exact issue. I'd love to own it one day, um, but it's one I want to come across naturally instead of trying to find online. So hopefully, you know, one day digging through comic boxes will pay off for me and I'll be able to get that issue. Now, I've always loved her character since that moment that I, you know, read a little bit about her. I've even cosplayed her twice. Back in 2022, I did a modern Mary Jane cosplay with the uh, Spider-Man heart shirt that I was actually going to wear today, but it's nowhere to be found, so maybe in the next Mary Jane video. Uh, we opted for Godzilla instead. I don't know where the connection is between the two, but here we are. Um, and then this year, actually last month, for Fan Expo Chicago, I did a Mary Jane Watson first appearance cosplay. So I had the speech bubble and everything, wore the same outfit she did, and it was pretty cool. People seemed to love it. I had a great time. Um, found out I look pretty good as a redhead. <laughs> so I was excited to do that cosplay and can't wait to do it again. Now, um, some of the comics that I have to show you guys today, uh, there are a lot of my older ones from like the 1980s, the 1990s, and I also uh, pulled out a few random ones that didn't really fit into any of the other themes that I'm going to be doing, and then a few that I just got very recently. So let's go ahead and start. So of course, where do we start? But the first appearance of Mary Jane Watson. This is Amazing Spider-Man issue 42. Um, big, big, big shout out to my parents who actually bought me this as an early birthday gift. Um, I'm extremely grateful to have it. Um, and like I said, it's the first appearance of Mary Jane. She uh, appears in the very last panel on the very last page. And Peter in before this has been putting off meeting Mary Jane. Uh, Aunt May has a friend whose niece is Mary Jane and Aunt May keeps telling Peter that he should meet Mary Jane, that they could, you know, get together. He's like, no, 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 it's fine. I don't need my aunt setting me up on dates. So he keeps putting it off and then it becomes inevitable. He ends up meeting her. It is in this comic and in that very last panel, she's standing there in his doorway. He's looking shocked because of just how beautiful and amazing she is and she says face it tiger you've just hit the jackpot and so that's uh as i talked about in the last video that's where the name of this channel comes from and it's just overall such a great panel i absolutely love it what an introduction for a character i don't think i can uh i don't think i have any other favorites that are quite like hers it's just so iconic so yes i do own her first appearance um, and it's probably my favorite comic that I have in my collection. So there is that one. Then, then I also have Marvel Tales 182, um, and this is a reprint of that book. And the reason I have this one is my eventual plan is to frame the first appearance uh, comic that I just showed you this one opened to that last page so that I don't have to, you know, risk messing up a uh, original copy of that. I got the reprint instead. I'm going to open it up to that last page where she's introduced. And then she had a series a few years ago, The Amazing Mary Jane. And for issue one, they did a blank variant. And I actually do 
a lot of art. Um, I do acrylic paintings, um, drawings, illustrations. I've dabbled in watercolor a little bit before. And my plan is to draw um, that panel uh, onto the blank cover and then frame all three side by side. And I just think it would be kind of a cool display. So I also have the reprint of her first appearance. And then our next comic is her first cover appearance. This is Amazing Spider-Man 59. She does also appear in the story, but it's the first time that she's featured on a cover. And because what I love to collect is Mary Jane covers, it only felt right that I got her first one. And I actually got this one um, in an eBay auction just a few weeks ago. It's still very new to my collection. Um, it's in great condition. It presents really well. I know the back cover of it had a little bit of damage, a few folds, and the corners weren't super clean, but the front of it, there's a few spine ticks, and I wouldn't say the corners are super sharp, but it presents super well. The colors are still very vibrant, and I would say that I got a pretty good deal on this. Next, we move on to Amazing Spider-Man 243. This is the return of Mary Jane Watson. Um, she's been gone for a year. I believe this is after Peter proposes to her for the first time. She says no. She leaves for like a year. Um, I believe this is when she goes to Florida with her Aunt Anna. Um, but yeah, so she's gone for a while. This is when she comes back. And she's not in the book a great deal. She's in there for a few pages and then Peter does think about and talk about her a little bit throughout the rest of it. But I think she's only in like five or six pages combined. I can't remember exactly. But uh, in the beginning, Mary Jane still has a key to Peter's apartment for some reason. Um, the drama, I guess. And she walks in and she walks into Peter kissing this girl, Amy Powell. And she says something along the lines of, oh, well, you've sure kept busy while I'm gone, Tiger, or while I was gone, Tiger. And I, I thought that was very uh, on brand for Mary Jane. But um, it turns out that this girl was just trying to make uh, her boyfriend or, or ex-boyfriend jealous, something along those lines. I haven't read the uh, books surrounding this one, so I'm not entirely uh, sure about that plot line. But he explains to Mary Jane that, you know, it was nothing. It was just, you know, for this one specific reason. And she's like, you know, whatever, it's fine. Uh, she gives him back the key to his apartment. He asks, how long are you planning on sticking around? She kind of brushes it off, says, we'll see, leaves, and that's that. So, um... Very, very small appearance from her, but she was on the cover. Um, I believe this is one that, is, so, okay. Uh, I always say if you've got a local comic book shop, go there first. Support them as much as you can. Buy your comics from there. And then if they don't have some, like, a specific issue that you're looking for, look other places. I don't really have a local comic shop. The closest one to me is an hour away and I can't go <laughs> as much as I would like to. And so I do the next best thing. I support my localist comic book shop, which is Graham Cracker Comics. I'm a subscription service so you can subscribe to current titles and get them shipped to you directly to your house. Um, that is the one that's like an hour away from me. So I go through them online and you can also add back issues to that subscription order. I get mine shipped once a month. Um, and so I'm always adding back issues to that. So I say support your local comic shop first. That's how I try and support mine. But a lot of the times you can also find great deals on eBay and Mercari that are pretty hard to pass up. And so whenever I buy on those sites, I always try to make the most of it. So if I find a few comics that I like, I'll go through their entire, you know, store and try to add all the ones that I really want on there, get them all at once. Most of the time, if they've got a Mary Jane book or cover, I'll just go ahead and add it in there. And I do believe that this was one of them. But after reading it, 
actually this morning, um, I'm very glad that I picked this one up. Next, we have Amazing Spider-Man um, 259, and this includes Mary Jane Watson's origin. So with this comic book opens with Mary Jane and Peter walking through a park, um, and they're just catching up. It's after she just returned in this one. Um, they're walking through this park, they're catching up, Mary Jane mentions her family, and then she says, you know, I guess I've never really told you about them. So she proceeds to tell Peter uh, kind of how her parents met, how their lives started, about her family, and she gets to the point that um, eventually her father became abusive to her, her sister, and her mom. And so eventually uh, her mom takes her and her sister and they leave and she talks about how uh, they were constantly moving schools, uh, they were going from place to place to place, she was always the new girl in school and she very much wanted attention and I think that uh, accounts for a lot with Mary Jane's personality. We know she's very bold, she's very eccentric, she's always saying what's on her mind, she has a lot of confidence about her. And there's this panel that I loved and it's one of her teachers and there she's introducing Mary Jane to her classmates and she says you know this is Mary Jane and Mary Jane's got one leg up on the table she's got her arms over mine she says the one and only and it's so very her and so we can see why she has the personality that she does and how it started from a very young age and I thought that was pretty interesting and then she also makes the point that throughout her life she's always been running away from her problems, which yes, that's a big um, part to Mary Jane. Uh, she's done it to Peter several times, she does it a lot in the comics, and she said it starts from an early age. She saw, you know, all these people in her life, and she gives multiple, in um, she gives multiple instances. But she's saying she always saw these people running away from her problems and she developed that habit as well. Uh, so you learn a lot about Mary Jane and why she is the way she is in this comic. Um, it's one that I'd been searching for for a while and all the copies that I were finding were kind of low grade. Um, but this one's actually in fantastic condition um, and I got a great deal for it. So very happy to have that in the collection as well. Next, we move on to one of my favorite covers. We have the special wedding issue. It's a double-sized annual. It's all about Peter and Mary Jane's wedding, and it's one of my favorite comics. Um, this is like my favorite couple in comic books, both DC and Marvel. I think the only other one that comes close to me like absolutely loving is Dick Grayson and Starfire. Um, but still, Mary Jane and Peter are at the very top of that list. Um, and this is such a well-known cover. I do have the new stand edition that has Spider-Man and Mary Jane. Eventually, I would like to get um, the direct edition, which is Peter and Mary Jane. And instead of the heroes and villains behind them, it's their family and friends. But this is, um, I feel like, a... Uh, a, like a classic comic book. Everyone should have it in their collection. Um, it's just a beautiful cover, one that I love having. Um, I've got a pretty decent copy as well. There is a bit of a spine roll and the corners aren't super sharp, but I think with a good pressing on this, it would be just a fantastic, um, fantastic uh, graded copy. So yeah, that is the wedding issue. And then we move on to Marvel Saga 22. Um, originally, this was just a cover buy for me. I saw this online. Yeah, I had to have it. Found it at Graham Crackers. Threw it into my monthly order and was super happy to get it. And then when I got it, I was like, well, you know, I might as well crack it open and read it. And it turns out that even though the cover is lovely, the inside is pretty cool too. And it's basically the history of Peter and Mary Jane. So it takes you from their very first meeting all the way up to their wedding, and it's just an overview of all the things that they've grown, <laughs> all the things that they've gone through, uh, both together and separately. So 
I thought it was pretty cool. And like I said, I originally got it for the cover. You've got Mary Jane, you see Spider-Man putting the engagement ring on her. She's saying face it tiger. I just hit the jackpot. Loved that the inside story is just as good. And something I found pretty interesting is when I was going through all these comics before the video, I noticed that in this one here, you have pages and panels from all five of the comics that I just showed you guys. So pages and panels from all five of these are featured in that Marvel Saga 22. Now next we have, actually I forgot to show you, I noticed this earlier um, the first time I tried to <laughs> film this video that this Marvel Saga, the little Spider-Man on the direct edition is trying to get the glare off of that. It's like dressed up in like little wedding attire and I think it's just absolutely adorable honestly. <laughs> I thought that was such a uh, fun little detail that they put on there. But moving on we have Amazing Spider-Man 19 from um, 1985. Uh, this one I have not yet read. Um, I did just buy it for the cover. I believe I saw it in Comic Book Corner 2.0. He bought a copy uh, a few months ago of it and I watched that video and I saw it. I will link his channel down in the description. Love watching his videos. Um, he does a lot of uh, um, uh, weekly hauls for, <laughs> couldn't think of the word, weekly hauls for his comics. Highly recommend. It's a very fun YouTuber to watch. Um, but he got one of these and I knew immediately I had to have one too. So I went online, found a copy and purchased it immediately. Um, it's in great condition. Uh, and eventually I can't wait to read this one. Now that's all that I have for, um, books that are a little bit older, like 1980s, 1990s. The next ones that I'll be showing you are more modern ones, ranging from a few years ago to just a few weeks ago. The first one is this one. It's Amazing Spider-Man 51. This one is pretty interesting to me because it was like always been a, a classic cover that I wanted to own. Um, but what I didn't realize up until a few weeks before I bought it was it's actually a J. Scott Campbell cover and J. Scott Campbell is one of my favorite artists. Definitely my favorite cover artist. I love all of his work with Mary Jane um, and Black Cat and I just think his art is absolutely stunning. I collect a lot of it. I am planning to eventually do a video on the Mary Jane comics that I own that are his artwork. This is also one of his covers. It's one of his early Mary Jane covers and it shocked me because it looks so different than the stuff that he does now. And I think it's just, you know, great improvement over time. But I, I was pretty excited to see that and knew that I had to own, you know, one of his first ones. So pretty, pretty cool to have that. I did read this one. It actually seemed extremely familiar to me. I may have read it uh, like a collected edition, um, a graphic novel as a kid and just don't remember it all too well, but it seemed vaguely, it seemed vaguely familiar. Um, Mary Jane's in there for just a little bit, a few pages here and there. Um, it seems to be another return. She must have been gone for a reason. Again, like I mentioned, always running away from her problems. So yeah, I would like to get some more issues in this series. It seemed pretty good. Um, the art was okay, but um, not terrible, so yeah, might look into that series as well. Next up, we have issue three of Spider-Man Blue. This one is the Mary Jane cover. Um, now, you might be surprised to find out that I never actually read Spider-Man Blue. Uh, that's just because I haven't had an opportunity to. Um, the graphic novel editions of this are hard to find and very expensive. Uh, I've seen some that are like $60 for just regular like paperback or just regular hardcover edition. <laughs> That's a little steep for me. Sometimes it's cheaper to just get the single issues of this comic. 
but I haven't yet found a set of them in a good enough grade and good enough condition for a decent enough price to get yet. It is very high on my list of comics that I need to read. Um, this one actually came free, I think from an order of comics that I got from Mercari. So thanks to the seller who added this in there. I think this is a great find. Um, really excited to have it. And I love the cover. I love the pale pink background. I don't think you see that a lot on comic covers. It makes it pretty different. Um, and uh, yeah, pretty cool to have this one. Then next, I have another one that I actually haven't read in full. This is Spider-Man Unlimited 10. I did get this for the cover. I'll put it a little closer. You can see it a little bit better. There you go. Definitely got that for the Mary Jane cover. Um, flipping through it though, uh, Mary Jane wasn't in this one. However, the story actually looked pretty interesting. Um, so if you guys have read this or uh, you know anything about it, tell me in the comments below because I'm definitely interested in this series. I'm wondering if I should, if I should pick some more up, um, but we'll see. I'll have to look up some reviews or see what you guys say and uh, maybe I'll look into reading those. Now, the next one that we have also has a bit of a story behind it. I've been wanting this cover for forever. <laughs> And actually, my family and I took a trip to Chicago uh, sometime last year, and we went to Graham Cracker Comics there. And uh, one of my things is that I get a magnet um, every time I travel somewhere, and they had some magnets at this comic shop. And one of them was the cover of the comic that I'm about to show you, and I thought that it was the closest I was ever going to get to owning that cover, it was just that magnet. Because I had looked everywhere for it and the only other time I'd saw the only other time I'd seen it besides the one that I bought was a CGC 9.6 copy and it was also being sold with a statue of Peter and Mary Jane so it was pretty high priced I, I couldn't really afford it um, and I hadn't seen any other copies since and then a few um, weeks ago maybe more like a month ago I found another copy and I, I picked it up right away, added that to my cart, checked out as fast as I could, and that is Love Romances number one. It's got a great cover with Peter and MJ. This really is a hard copy to find, but it was hard for me to locate. Um, it is a Marvel book, however, Peter and Mary Jane aren't actually in it, even though they are on the cover. Um, I'm not sure if this had multiple covers, I actually need to look that up and see, but it's got four short stories that are like romance or love themed um, in there, but like I said, no Peter or Mary Jane, but they are on the cover and I love this cover, so I was absolutely psyched to add it to my collection. And these next three comics I'm going to show you are actually very, very new. They are Amazing Spider-Man 31, the first appearance of Jackpot, and these are the second prints of that book with the Jackpot covers. So this one is kind of like a magazine cover. Uh, it's my favorite one that they released so far. Um, I think it's pretty cool. I just, I, I love the magazine layout of this. Very excited to have it. I actually have two copies of this. I pre-ordered it from Midtown Comics and then also got a copy through my regular subscription from Graham Crackers. So I do have two of these. And I also have two of these as well, which is another Amazing Spider-Man 31, but this time it is the Spider-Man 300 homage variant. Um, pretty freaking cool. <laughs> I love this. I know they do a lot of this um, homage for lots of different characters, but I think it looks pretty cool for Jackpot. Um, I am excited to see where they uh, take this character. I think she has a lot of potential. Um, I loved seeing her with powers in the... Um, Oh, what was that called? It was Mary Jane and Black Cat. Dark Web. The Dark Web Mary Jane and Black Cat 
five issue series. Um, love seeing her with powers in that. I think it's something new, cool, and different for Mary Jane. I'm excited to see where it takes her and fingers crossed it's well written <laughs> and I do believe I, I read somewhere that she's supposed to get a series, I'm assuming probably a limited series, um, for the jackpot um, character. So hopefully that's good as well because I'm such a big fan and if it's not done right I can see it being kind of meh but if it's done correctly I think it has potential to be super super cool so I um I def I so I did get two copies of each of those I'm excited to have them and then this last one uh before I show you I don't normally order books like this I uh have a hard time uh, um, paying a lot of money for one single comic. Um, there are some exceptions to that. The first cover appearance of Mary Jane. I do have an issue of Batman 635, I believe, which is the first appearance of Jason Todd as the Red Hood. Um, and I've got a few others that are a little higher priced um, that I didn't mind shelling out the money for. One thing that I don't love overpaying for is virgin variants just because they don't have the title on the art um i'd rather just get the one with the title and call it good um there's been very 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 few exceptions to that this is one of them i did again order it from midtown comics they were having a pre-order um comic sales so if you pre-ordered it you got you know i can't remember what the discount was but you got so much off of one of them so i did order the virgin variant of the spider-man 300 homage cover uh because there's only going to be one first appearance of jackpot might as well get all the copies of it that i can um so it's pretty cool um i'm sure i'll show them in a later video but i also have the uh, cover A uh, of that comic and then I have the Miss Marvel negative space variant of that one as well. So that wraps up um, the comics that I pulled out for today's video. Uh, not too, too many this time. I definitely have a lot more but I think the next videos are going to be um, very specifically themed. I'm going to be doing the J. Scott Campbell one of MJ covers. I'll be doing the one from her series specifically and then they also did a bunch of variant covers for lots of ongoing series at that point for the Amazing Mary Jane. They were the Amazing Mary Jane variants and there's lots and lots and lots of them. I have quite a few uh, and then there's also like the Renew Your Vows series. I have lots of covers with MJ on there for that. Um, so yeah, lots more to get to, but I wanted to get this series started. I thought this was a great place to start. And I think that that about wraps it up. So that's all I've got for you guys today. I hope you enjoyed the video. Remember to like, comment, subscribe, share, leave your thoughts in the comments down below. Tell me what are your favorite Mary Jane covers? Are there any more that, you know, I need to buy? Because guys, I gotta know these things. Um, what series have you guys read that you really loved her in? And let me know about that Spider-Man Unlimited. I was kind of intrigued by it. I will see you guys in the next video. I hope you hit the jackpot with the next comics that you guys get. Um, and happy collecting. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.